What's going on guys, Jack here and welcome to a Football Manager 2012 guide. This is going to be a guide which when you hear the title of or maybe read the title of, you're going to feel like there's not that much to know, but I'm hoping that I can open some people's eyes. A lot of people are going to know the stuff I'm covering here as it is. A fairly basic tutorial, but I'm hoping to include something that everyone can use. So, today's video is going to be all about picking a start in 11 when you first start at a new club or at your current club at the start of a save. Uh, I feel as if there's two ways that people go about this uh, that are wrong. And a lot of people do both of these. Okay, so number one is people go to a club, so in this case Liverpool, just for the basis of this argument because that's who I am, and they come in with two, well, either one of two ideas. The first one is, and I guess it's probably the most understandable one, is uh, that if you play the starting 11 that play in real life week in, week out, uh, and play the same formation, you're going to have the most success. Um, just for clarification, Football Manager is a simulator, not an actual game, uh, and not a physical thing. It doesn't run off the real life stats, it is all numeric data. So essentially, it's not always going to be 100% right, and very often playing the team that starts on the Saturday isn't going to be the team that you want to start with on Football Manager. So that's the first kind of, I guess, mistake people make. The other one they often do is people come into the club with a preconceived tactic or idea, like, right, I'm going to play this tactic off the bat. And the problem with this is, coming in with a tactic idea, you may not have the players to suit this, and you may not have the money to bring in all the players you need to make the formation work. And perhaps your current squad just aren't suited to playing it. So with Football Manager, it's a fine balance of getting a formation that makes the most of your best players and a formation that you want to play because it, you need to find a balance somewhere. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I go about picking my first 11 and my uh, substitutes. So hopefully this video has hel helped you guys. I am planning on releasing kind of a series of guides covering this kind of area and this kind of stuff. The very basic stuff, maybe about finances. But for now, let's get crack on straight away now because I've already rambled for a few minutes. Let's look at our starting players. So what I've got here is I've got a custom view set up. This is my team management page. Uh, I have a pre-set up kind of, uh, I guess, a layout. You can add or remove columns. So you'll notice I've got the ability and potential as well, well as kind of the selection info uh, columns that you'd normally have. And you can just insert any column at any time by right-clicking, insert column, and then everything you could ever want is under one of these uh, kind of subheadings here, coaching, contract, fitness, etc. Uh, it can be quite hard finding the ones you want at times cause, just because they're all listed, but I can assure you most of the things you're going to want are going to be there. So now that I've done that, and I've now sorted my players by ability, and literally what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and get the best out of my players that I have. So I'm going to be putting all the players who are above a free star so free star or above into the starting lineup somewhere. So let's start from the back with Rayner in goal. Uh, Glenn Johnson can play right back. Aga plays centre back. Uh, Quatez can play centre back. Sahin can play centre mid. Gerard can play right mid. Uh, Lucas in the centre. I, I know Liverpool's squad well. Uh, you will find, obviously, when you do this yourself, that you have to... Um, you know, look at players and compare them and really make sure the assistant reports are correct. So that's the strongest players now selected in a starting lineup. You'll, uh, well, you should know that assistant reports aren't always right. They combine a combination of form and the actual kind of statistical ability as well as an element of uncertainty kind of error, shall we say, that I guess a coach could make in real life. So I know for a fact that Jose Enrique is as good as Glenn Johnson is on the right. So if I just do a comparison here of their attributes, you'll see what I'm getting at here. Uh, so if we do a comparison between these two guys, uh, Enrique is, a, is slightly physical and slightly faster, but Johnson just has a bit more going forward. So that's just an example of when an assistant report can be wrong. Obviously, you can see here Johnson's getting foot three and a half star, and Rico's only getting two and a half. So although I'm going primarily off this ability when selecting the players who I'm going to be for sure keeping in my starting eleven, please do bear in mind that your assistant might be wrong, and it is better just to go through and check players individually. 
But now that we've done that, we move on to the tactical side of things. And the most important thing really is making sure your players are playing in the best positions and playing the best roles they can uh, for you. And you want to base your formation as much as you can off playing players where they play best. So let's start from the back here. You can look at any player's um, preferred roles by looking here. Um, this is another custom role, uh, custom uh, kind of layout view that I have. I've just right click it and inserted the columns that I want. So I've got position, role and duty. Uh, if you don't know what roles and duties are, very basically they are, although a player can play centre mid, you could play as a ball winning centre mid or a playmaker. And um, basically your role is the... Not the position, but kind of what they like to do in that position. And the duty is basically if they're going to be defensive, attacking, or kind of a support role. But anyway, let's move on with the keeper. So there's two roles for a keeper, the sweeper keeper and regular keeper. I'm just going to keep Reina as a regular keeper for the benefit of this. Uh, we've then got our wing backs, uh, both of whom like to have attacking roles. So it makes sense uh, with the formation I intend on playing to put them to attack. And Jose Enrique likes to play fullback. Uh, Glenn Johnson likes to play wingback. I prefer uh, fullbacks if I'm going to be playing with some wide midfielders, which I am intending on doing. So I'm just going to put these guys to fullback for now. Um, it's also important to note that although it says their preferred attack, I intend to play with a defensive midfielder. If that wasn't the case for you, I strongly discourage playing with attacking like left backs and right backs if you're not going to have additional cover from the midfield. But anyway, we've then got our centre backs. I've done a video all about centre backs, so I'm not going to go into any detail at all here. But uh, we've got Aga, who's a stopper, and Skirtle, who's a coverer. So we'll just do this very quickly. Um. And then for the roles, we've got Aga, who is a ball-playing uh, defender. And Skull's just a regular centre-back. So now that we've got our back four sorted, this is where we're going to get fiddly here. Because I like to start with a basic 4-4-2 and then kind of work out players' positions, that kind of stuff. But now we're left in a situation where we have Gerard over on the right for the benefit of this at the moment. And Lucas and Sahin in the centre. So Lucas and Sahin, I have a feeling Lucas likes to play defensive mid. He does. So I am going to move him there because of what, what I'm going to do shortly. So I'm going to move Lucas here. Just for now, just for now, I want to point this out. And he likes to play deep lying playmaker, so we'll put him as a deep line playmaker for now. We then have Sahin, who's an advanced playmaker, and Gerard, who's an advanced playmaker. So you don't want to play with three playmakers in your midfield. So I'm going to be kind of playing this as if I didn't know the squad and what I'm going to end up with. So Immediately, I'm thinking, well, Gerard's probably a better playmaker than Lucas is. I prefer to have an advanced playmaker, especially with Liverpool's squad. Uh, they're only really blessed with Suarez up top, because uh, this is the kind of unupdated database with uh, storage in. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to move Gerard into a centre attack in mid role. And I know that Gerard can play here. It says that he can play centre attack in mid. And of all the positions, it's the one he's most comfortable with. So, we're going to put him as an advanced playmaker for now. For now. So, advanced playmaker. And he prefers the roll attack, so we'll give him the roll attack. Um, we've then got Suarez, who's a complete forward. Uh, I like to have complete forwards and target men playing the dead centre of an attack, so that's what we'll do for now. And then we've got these two players. Uh, who are the two wingers who I don't have players for in the squad who are good enough. So we'll just stick them on the side for now. So now that I've got kind of a general shape just by choosing the players and trying to get them in the best places for them, it's now time to move on to the roles and how they kind of correlate to each other because you might have a midfield of five in this case and they might all want to play the duty of attack. But if you play with all duties of attack, you are going to get scored against a lot. So, let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got Lucas, who wants to play deep line playmaker, but we've already got Gerard as an advanced playmaker. And Lucas can play anchorman. Now, anchorman's a position, uh, or rather a role, that can only be uh, done by a player playing the centre defensive mid role. And because Lucas is playing centre mid, his next best role is defensive midfielder. Now, 
for some players in the lower divisions, the third choice role might not be a very good role for the player. So you can just check this by going to highlight key attributes for role, uh, midfield role, uh, defensive midfielder, defend. And what this does is it'll highlight all the key attributes so you can see, yes, this player can play this third choice role well or no, he can't. So in this case, Lucas can play this role well. So. Let's change him to a centre midfielder with the defend um, role. And now that we've got that, we now need to look at uh, Nuri Sahin. So looking at Sahin's stats first and foremost, um, he's a creative player. He doesn't have much defensively. He has good technical ability and good work rate. So we've already got a playmaker in Jared and a defensive player in Lucas. So I'm going to look for a supporting kind of role for Sahin to play. So his primary choices are advanced playmaker or deep line playmaker, just because he has such insane creativity. So we have that option. Now what I could do here is if I was to compare Gerard and Sahin, I could look at which one has the best creative stats and from there judge whether or not um, you know who's going to make the best creative player so actually I am actually going to mix things up from what I initially planned because looking at these stats Sahin looks like he's got a bit more creativity compared to Gerard, but Gerard just has a bit more in the attacking side of things and the aerial side of things and he's just a he, he kind of peaks in other areas so while Sahin is technically gifted and Gerard's attackingly gifted it makes sense to change their roles to suit this so I'm now going to look at trying to play Sahin as a deep line playmaker. The reason I'm putting him as a deep line playmaker rather than an advanced playmaker is because an advanced playmaker is a very attacking player. By having Sahin as a deep line playmaker, it just means he's going to sit back alongside Lucas. Uh, his preferred uh, duty is support. I'm actually going to play him in a defensive role here just because we've got to bear in mind the fact we've got a fullback, well, both fullbacks who are going to want to bomb it up the wings and support on the attack. And so Lucas and Sahin don't want to adventure too far from the centre. So now that we've got Sahin playing playmaker, we now need to come up with an alternate role for Gerard. So looking at his second kind of choice thing, he wants to play inside forward, which is fine because we've only got uh, Suarez up front at the moment. So it would be nice to have someone who's going to get up for him. So we'll just have a quick look at the inside forward kind of required attributes to see just for certain I'm, I'm pretty certain that Jared can play inside forward and you can see there very comprehensively he can uh, so we'll put Jared as an inside forward and now we've kind of got a general role for the team sorted we're lacking wingers because Liverpool don't have any wingers but for the benefit of this I'm going to put Joe Cole on the right because that's where he prefers to play and we'll put Downing on the left just for the benefit of this. Uh, where is Downing? Where is Downing? There he is, Stuart Downing, he, he's useless. Don't get me started on Stuart Downing. Okay, so now that we have an attacking right winger and an attacking left winger, we can already see that they both want to play winger and attack, which is fine in a situation like this. That that's probably where I'd want them to play. So now that we've got this sorted, you can really see how we've picked out a team uh, that plays to the player's strengths. I've tried. I've not gone in with a preconceived idea. I've looked at my best players and I'm trying to get the most out of them by playing them in the roles and positions that they're most comfortable with. So now that we've done that, we now need to move on to our team instructions. Now, team instructions are less about the individual players and more about um, the formation, the shape and how you want to play. So with this kind of very crowded out midfield, uh, I've got a good chance of being able to control the play. So for my strategy, I'm going to in fact put this on control. Uh, control is the best way to guard against a counter-attack. Uh, I prefer control over attacking um, in a game where perhaps we're playing a team who have got a few defenders, maybe a defensive midfielder, and I'm wary that they maybe have a few fast players up front who they can pump the ball to and hit me on the counter. If it's half-time and I'm getting a lot of the ball but I'm not getting anywhere because we're just controlling it, then I'd just get, like to switch up to attacking and then maybe drop the defensive line a tiny bit. But anyway, we'll have strategy on defend for now. Uh, for style, we are going to play fluid. And the reason we're going to play fluid is... Um, 
Fluid basically splits the team into attacking and defensive units. Um, so the more creative players and the more attacking players, so in this case the top four on the wing backs, are going to get forward and really you know play free flowing football. Whereas the four defensive players that make up the core of the centre of the team are really going to look to, I guess, just focus on defending and doing their individual roles that they've been set, rather than just going adventurous and wandering and leaving space in behind. As for passing style, uh, I recommend that if you have talented midfielders and maybe you're playing a tight-knit formation like this to go with shorter or default, whereas if you perhaps lack uh, really good creative players in the centre, the more direct style of play suits those who just want to pump it to perhaps their more talented forwards. Creative freedom, again, this is to, um, I guess, it basically... It's how much players are going to risk things. So with a situation like this, um, f f I'm trying to think of a good example. Imagine my wing backs are on support, so they get up occasionally. If my creative freedom set to more expressive, it means that the wing backs on support may break out their tactical plan saying go play support and they might, might kind of see an opportunity in the distance and run and bomb it up and try and give the winger some support. Whereas if you have it on more discipline, they're less likely to kind of... I guess ignore your instructions. Uh, I'm going to keep that on default, that's one I don't like to mess around with. Uh, closing down is again if you're trying to hit them on the counter standing off means that you're going to allow them to have more space but as soon as they get into the final third you are going to be there whereas pressing more harries the opposition doesn't give them time on the ball and is good for in a game where you're desperate to get possession and then retain it. Tackling, uh, that's more personal preference other than if you're going to set individual instructions uh, in the pre-match thing, in which case players with less bravery, you want to go make sure your players going harder tackling on them. Uh, marking is one that it depends on how you're playing. So if you're coming up against another team playing a 4-4-2, uh, and you're playing 4-4-2, man marking is kind of the way to go, it just means you're going to stick on their men. Whereas perhaps if they're playing a very odd formation that you don't really see any symmetry to, or you're not really sure how your team's going to cover themselves, usually it's safe to go with kind of zonal marking where if you've got a well kind of, I guess, spread team, as in this case where we have a lot few players on the wings and some players in the centre, uh, playing kind of zonal marking means you're going to cover the areas on the pitch that you need to. Uh, crossing, you've got two options, you can have float, drill or default. Drill is, means the ball comes low to the near post, float always sends it to the back post. Uh, so, And then you've got roaming, which is how much players like to wander away from positions. This can be quite a good one. Um, in a formation like this where you've got a few players who are really going to look to roam and wander and try and find space in the final third. Um, but default, again, is probably the safest way to go with this. Um, a lot of these I like to keep on default it is really only passing style, creative freedom and then style and strategy, which I uh, really focus on. And then we come to the defensive line, which is basically, again, this links a lot to, and in fact, a lot of these slides relate to how you want to go about achieving your strategy so obviously um, if I was playing attacking I might want to push up my f uh, defensive line and really kind of get men up the field whereas if I was playing counter-attack I'm probably more likely to want to have my defense sit back uh, the sliders do change as you change strategy but that you can just tick the box and change them if you maybe want to try and alternate to the kind of standard control or standard counter or standard attack or whatever strategy it may be. Width um, really comes down to two things. One is how good your wingers are. The other is how good your players in the centre are. Uh, and I guess how wide the opposition are playing. Um, if you're playing a formation where perhaps your wingers are more defensive players, maybe they're just wide midfielders, and the opposition are playing maybe a 4-1-2-1-2, you may want to try playing slightly narrower, just because you're not expecting your wingers to do much going forward, and they can give a bit more additional support to the guys in the centre. Tempo is another one that's kind of down to personal preference. Do you want to patiently build up play uh, whilst controlling the pace and tempo? Or are you one of these teams where you want to get the ball controlled but really kind of wear down the opposition by passing it around and really exhausting them? Time wasting, pretty self-explanatory. Focus passing, this comes down to where your best players are really. If you've got a really strong centre of the team, as in my case, uh, I would suggest putting the 
uh, folks passing on through middle. If you have some really good wingers and perhaps lack the players in the center of the park, it makes more sense to focus it down the wings, especially, and again, this comes down to opposition tactics. If they're playing a narrow midfield uh, and you've got half decent wingers, it can make sense to focus the passing into where the space is on the wings. Counter attack is just whether or not you want to hit them on the counter attack. And playing offside is to do with, do you want your defensive line to step up? You've then got your playmaker, which by default, if you've got a player set to deep line playmaker or advanced playmaker, it will defaultly select them. If you've got two of the, like, two playmakers in your team, which, as I've already said, I, I have seen people do, but it doesn't work. Um, I'm not sure who it picks as the default one. Uh, you can choose a target man, even if the role isn't set to target man. So Suarez is a complete forward here, but... He is going to be the target man of the squad as the lone forward. And then you can choose your supply, which is, um, well, mixed is to more talented players. Defeat is to players who perhaps have good first touch and good composure. Uh, to head, players who are tall. And run onto ball for players who have good off the ball stats and good pace. But anyway, guys, that is the basics of how to set up a team and how to kind of go about adjusting the sliders and your team's mentality to. I guess make the most of what you have uh, so as I said this is more of a video just to kind of say that you you don't need to go with the tactic that's played in real life by the club you're at nor do you need to go in there with a preconceived idea you really need to get a balance of looking at what your players can do and in doing what's best for the team in terms of you know getting a formation that makes use of the best players in the squad um, that really is the difference between winning and, I guess, losing in many games. So maybe if you're having trouble with tactic, uh, some of these tips have helped. Uh, if you knew a lot of this stuff, I apologise. As I said, this is a fairly basic tutorial, but I just want to get some core knowledge out there for perhaps people struggling with tactics because I know it's one element of Football Manager that people do struggle with. But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you could smash the like button, as always, that would be appreciated. This will probably be another video that goes up on the Football Manager subreddit. Uh, so if you're seeing this from the post, feel free to kind of leave any feedback or dis stuff open for discussion over there. And other than that, guys, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Thank you for watching. It's been me, Jack, and I'm out.